Hello everyone, my name is James. Uh, our project was to analyze the optimal performance of mixtures of fatty acid methyl ester and commercially available diesel. Uh, here's our agenda for today. For, for our project objective, uh, as a society, we are looking for new and innovative ways to address the ongo uh, ongoing climate change. Uh, one promising solution is a compound known as fatty acid methyl esters. Uh, these can be added to diesel to increase the renewable fuel content. Um, at this time, the Canadian government mandates having 5% and 2% proportion of renewable additive in gasoline and diesel, respectively. Our goal is that we sought to confirm whether to whether the current policy is wise and if there is any reason that we could increase it further or decrease it. As for the compounds in question, our solute was methyl stearate. Methyl stearate is a naturally occurring fatty acid methyl ester that occurs that is extracted from European hops. Uh, and for our solvent, we use N-hexadecane. It is a 16-length carbon chain hydrocarbon. It's one of various hydrocarbons that are used to make commercial diesel fuel. Uh, as for changes from our original plan, uh, we could not find a model engine with which to run the, our diesel samples, so instead we approximated the process using thermogravimetric analysis, or TGA. Uh, we blended the stock, we blended stock samples together instead of uh, synthesizing our own biodiesel. This helped to ensure uh, uniformity, uh, chemical uniformity of the samples and ensure that the results we got from one sample are applicable to another sample. And we did not use gas chromatography to analyze the oxygen deposition and corrosion. Uh, once we started the experiment, we realized that fatty acid methyl esters, by definition, already contain some amount of oxygen. And so we had no way to determine if the oxygen was from the ester or from contamination. Hello everyone. Uh, as we go through the changes during our plan, uh, so our workflow uh, goes through a different process. So the first first step that we did that uh, research, as we uh, gone through some changes that we are not using uh, 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 actual engine, so we are running TGA. So we have to get uh, uh, information about uh, uh, TGA and which compound we are using it. So the first step was the research. The second step was the blending. Uh, as we uh, get our samples, that was fame and an exadecan. Uh, that we blend, uh, blend both of the samples and make different types of concentrations. Uh, the third thing is TGA. Uh, we did the TGA instead of uh, engine uh, to check the mass loss uh, with respect to temperature or time. Along with the TGA, we also did the pump calorimeter to check the energy output. Uh, and in the last, uh, uh, we did the analysis to, to get our results. Uh, and the last most important thing which is clean up, uh, that we made different concentrations uh, that we have to discard after completing the project and we discard that uh, uh, solutions into the non-halogenated containers. So for now I would like to invite Heli to uh, discuss further. Hello everyone. So now let's talk about key concerns. Uh, so here, these are the three main key, key concerns behind our project. So. Uh, one is environmental concern. As we all know that nowadays environmental problems are increasing, especially greenhouse gas. And uh, uh, with the help of our project, we can reduce uh, environmental uh, uh, problem as we are using biodiesel and which helps to reduce uh, non-renewable non uh, fuel. So, and it will also help us to reduce uh, like cost which we use in uh, uh, fuels. Another one is economic concern. As we know that uh, if our project gets success, then it will create hundreds of job opportunity. And because of that, people can, uh, it will increase uh, consumer spend, uh, spend, spending on the things and uh, as well as tax revenue. So. As a result, it will help to boost economy. And the last one is future industry direction. So uh, if, if our project gets success, and uh, it will help the industry to reduce non-renewable fuels which we are using. As a result, it will help to uh, low like, environmental problems. So it will help <coughs> in the future as well. <coughs> OK, so here. 
we split our team into two parts because of the length of the time as Ms. Carter suggests us to split the team. So I and James were responsible for bomb calorimeter and Divya and Karandar uh, were responsible for TGA. So here uh, bomb calorimeter help us to find uh, like energy output of the particular sample. So now uh, like I am going to talk about how it works. So first we two most important thing in bomb calorimeter is this uh, like amount of the sample. So sample should be between 1 to 2 gram and the pressure oxygen pressure should be uh, not more than 300 uh, psi. In our case uh, oxygen uh, pressure was uh, between 240 to 280. So first we take a small amount of sample and uh, we put it into a small uh, bucket and uh, then we uh, take 10 centimeter of wire and uh, put it into a metal arms then after we can put that whole thing into a bomb and then uh, put with oxygen uh, oxygen uh, like oxygen regulator and here I am going to show you like how we do that experiment via video. Here we record the video as well. So one. Uh, here we're connecting the uh, ignition wire in the bomb to the uh, electrical system and placing it gently into two liters of water. Uh, the amount of water is uh, is necessary to keep consistent. <coughs> and here we're putting the lid on. Uh, that device <coughs> on the right uh, keeps the water rotating so that the heat is distributed evenly. And then the left is, that's a thermometer. Here we, in the next, we are going to ignite the sample. So when we ignite the sample, it, the red light is flashed. That means the sample is completely ignited. And once uh, it, the temperature will go up and once it's stabilized, then that's your ending temperature. And one of the main important thing is you need to measure your starting temperature as well. After that, uh, you can see the result. Apologies, we're having some technical difficulties. There we go. All right, so here is a graph of the energy outputs we found from bomb calorimetry. Um, all of these values are measured in change in temperature in degrees Celsius per gram. Uh, what you can see is that the general trend is that the more methyl stearate is added to the blend, the less energy we actually get from it. Um, we speculate that this is because the having too much methyl stearate actually makes the reaction less efficient. Um, also, as, you'll, as we'll get to in a minute, uh, the 50% and 75% samples uh, had a tendency to re-solidify, which also likely interrupted the process. As for challenges and oxidations, as I just said, at high concentrations greater than 50%, the methyl stearate re-solidified and formed a mushy semi-solid. Uh, as seen in the picture to the right. Uh, this is because if there's more than 50% methyl stearate, there's less than 50% solvent, and then it doesn't mix together properly. Uh, von calorimeter is a sensitive piece of equipment. Um, before we could start using it, uh, several of the parts had to be replaced. Uh, it is important uh, to make sure uh, the, that your equipment is kept up to date in order to ensure that you get meaningful results. And a quick statistical analysis showed that the mean energy output uh, does not actually differ significantly when the methyl stearate content was increased. Uh, from that, we can conclude that there isn't really any benefit to methyl stearate concentrations greater than 6.25%.
Okay, let's move on to the TGA part. Uh, so, what is TGA? TGA is the thermogravimetric analyze, analyzer uh, that used to uh, uh, measure the mass loss uh, with compared to temperature or time. Uh, and it's also an analytical uh, technique to, that provides uh, crucial insights into the thermal properties. Okay, so how thermo, uh, how TGA works? Uh, you can see the photo over there. Uh, this is the furnace and this is a stand where we put our platinum pan and uh, this furnace just go up and down. Um, when we start, uh, this TGA is run by a software uh, called TA and uh, to analyze the graphs of the TGA, we, uh, there is a software called TA, TA Universal. Uh, in, uh, in the TGA, two gases are used. First one is a nitrogen, which is oxidizing gas and uh, uh, second one is nitrogen, sorry, it's an inert, inert gas. Uh, to cool the furnace or uh, to cool down the furnace, after the run, we have to uh, apply cooling method. There is two, uh, there was two cooling two, two cooling method. First one is the glycol by using the glycol pump, and second one is the using the uh, air cylinder. Uh, we use the air cylinder, which gives uh, uh, which takes less time to cool down. Uh, but the thing is that uh, air cylinder that we use in the laboratory cost us around uh, 300 bucks, and that we uh, we have approximately used three cylinder. That's uh, so costly for us. Uh, so uh, if you have time, you can go with the glycol, uh, glycol method. Uh, let's move on to the TGA graph. Uh, this is the TGA graph. Uh, it looks smoother. If the graph looks smoother, uh, we can say that the combustion of the uh, compound uh, it gets easy. Uh, this is a 75% mixture uh, with the nitrogen gas. Uh, the second one is the same, uh, same sample, but. Uh, we cannot say, we cannot predict anything or we cannot get any data from that smooth graph, smooth, smooth graph. So, we, so we have to do the derivative of, of it. Uh, from the derivative, we can uh, see that this is the this is the onset temperature, uh, this is the peak temperature and this is the end temperature. From the peak temperature, uh, it's 199.12 degrees Celsius. So we can say that uh, 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 we get a close result uh, compared to the engine. Uh, if we are, uh, in the actual engine, uh, the gasoline or diesel burns at 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, so, like we are close to uh, 200, and uh, we did the same sample with the nitro with the air, air gas. Uh, you are seeing the peak here, but uh, it's just uh, uh, like unbalancing the pan in the furnace or some just noise over there. Same with the derivative, and we get the 193.07 peak temperature over here. Okay, now, uh, now let's talk about 12.5% concentration. Uh, this is the graph uh, with the nitrogen and this is the derivative in which we get the temperature around 146.42 degrees Celsius. So we can say that uh, 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 between 50% to 75% uh, we, uh, uh, we will get to know that we can uh, close to the temperature over there. Uh, Below 50 percent, uh, we are like uh, just 150. We are not close to 1 uh, to 10 degrees Celsius. Same with the air, and this, this is the derivative. Okay, so this is the chart. Uh, this is the bar chart of our uh, TGA analysis data. Uh, it's not suitable for the data that represent TGA, but uh, uh, like we are not able to. Uh, uh, perf uh, we are not able to show in the scatter graph uh, just because of the. Uh, uh, variable to variable. Uh, from here, you can clearly see that uh, between 50% and 75%, uh, you will get uh, uh, more accurate result around 210 degrees Celsius compared to 25% and 12.5%. 12, 12 but the thing was that uh, between 50, 50 to 75%, the, uh, the compound gets solidified and uh, the, solid com uh, the solid compound we cannot use in the actual engine. So, like, uh, we did not. Uh, uh, we use 50% and 75% as well with the and uh, hexadecan and frame. Uh, these are the tables uh, with the nitrogen and uh, with the air. Now I would like to invite Dia to discuss further. Thanks, Karan. Uh, here are the challenges that we faced in the TGA. Before starting it, I just want to say if you face any difficulty, then you can get the success in the project. If, uh, now continuing on the troubleshooting. Uh, firstly, we uh, face the application startup process. Like it's take lots of time to start up, but 
how to solve this pro, uh, uh, problem that we restart the task manager to uh, restart the application. Then it's a uh, TGM machine is very sensitive. It's need to be placed in the strong table, but earlier we have in the regular table, so it gives unusual noise and peaks when we, when it was in the regular table. So to solve this, place in TGM, TGM, TGM machine in the strong double. Unusual noise, when we start the gas cylinder, then it comes the unusual noise from the cylinder and equipment. To, to solve this, uh, please check the gas cylinder pressure to go solve the unusual noise. Overloaded sample, there is a limit for the sample which gives a less than one gram in the pan. But if you are putting more than one gram, it goes the error, it shows the error in the application that the sample is overloaded. And most import, important thing is uh, cooling time. The, it takes 45 minutes to cool down the furnace while while there are some techniques like uh, to give the air cool pressure in the application and gives it reduces the time of air cooling in the furnace. Now next steps. Uh, in our project, we can success our project, but we can't get some desired results in that. So we can try. We try our project, and if you want to, if any next case want to try, then it's gonna be success in the project. Uh, why audience should interested in our project? So it's gonna be a sustainable solution. It's a green energy. So and it's a substitute of the original fuel. Uh, next steps I would like to say uh, in our we didn't make a biodiesel we just bought it from the market so produce the biodiesel in house for the next batches who come to try to do the project then it's going to be uh, bought the engine original diesel engine and run the sample in that engine next is using various type of frame just we use methyl steered to, or, uh, to do, do the practical but there are many various frames use that and make a, a sample concentration. Another is running with the concentration above 50. As in the TG graph shows that 50% and above result shows close to 210 degrees degree Celsius of ignition temperature. So make a concentration above 50% mixture and make sure that add any compound that can't, that once get solidified after running it. Next is differentiating end to end error. We are not clear that which gas is suitable for this. So make sure when you are uh, doing this project, uh, please <coughs> differentiate it, which gas is suitable for it. Next is conclusion. At the end of the project, we can say that it's a biofuel, it's a green sustainable energy. So it's less efficient and it's a conventional option of the original fuel blend. Uh, for the biofuel, it is burns at high temperature but gives less energy output. Next is we also face the TG, TGA challenges and also in the bomb calorimeter. meter. But we can say that uh, we can say that run used by original engine, run with it and prove your result in the successful pro pro project. Next is uh, explore various kind of frame compound. Like there are many various frame compound, use that, make it, and you can run with the project too. Special thank you, thank you everyone for coming here. And I would like to talk this part for guiding us and showing part to conclude the project. Thank you.